Assalamu alaikum. Uh, given the fact that the super exceptional circumstances that the country and the whole worldwide are undergoing, that is from the spread of the novel coronavirus, as everybody knows, it has become necessary to upload our classes electronically during the holiday granted by the Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research. To begin with, I find it of utmost importance to start right from the beginning of chapter 12, Language and the Brain. This chapter introduces the relationship between language and the brain, and within which we have different clauses that will be discussed uh, successively. So actually, we need to know that various features of language that people use to produce and understand linguistic messages. And what is meant by linguistic, mes linguistic messages <coughs> is the interpretable and understandable messages that the receiver or a receiver can figure out. So the question, where is this ability to use language located? Obviously, the answer is it is in the brain. However, it can't be just anywhere in the brain. Uh, for example, it cannot be where damage was done to the right hemisphere of the patient brain in, in Alice Flaherty's description. The woman could no longer recognize her own leg, but she could still talk about it. The ability to talk was unimpaired and hence clearly located somewhere else in the brain. Within the discussion of this chapter, chapter 12, I'm going to raise almost about 12 questions. So the answer of these questions will be pointed to you as well as the page number. So I may start with the question number one, the definition of neurolinguistics. So this is found um, on page 155. As you can see here, the highlighted lines, the first line and the beginning of the second line gives the answer of the definition of the uh, neurolinguistics, which is the study of the relationship between language and the brain. The same page also introduces the components or the areas of the brain. These components, these four components are shown and detailed on the next pages and it is figured in, on, uh, in figure 12.1 on the next page. Uh, we can see that the shaded areas in this illustration indicate the general locations of those language functions involved in speaking and listening. We have come to know that these areas exist largely through the examination in autopsies of the brains of people. Uh, those people or the people referred to here means those people who have the damage in one of the areas, maybe in the component number one, component number two, or component number three, as well as component number four. So these autopsies were done to those patient people to discover and uh, to come up with things that uh, the next generations can get advantage of. So uh, in the beginning here, you can see that the brain is consisted of two hemispheres. We use this linguistic terminology, hemisphere, not part, because this is the right and the correct usage of the areas that are, we, that are going to be discussed next. So, uh, actually, the brain is consisted of two hemispheres, two hemispheres, the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. Later, we will be introduced to what is meant by the right and the left hemispheres in details, but Currently, we just need to know that the, uh, the brain is divided into these two hemispheres, and these hemispheres are connected by what is called corpus callosum. So if you are next asked what is meant by corpus callosum, 
you can say it is the connection between the two hemispheres of the brain. Page 156 displays the figure I referred to earlier. As you can see here in the figure, we have four components of the brain. Four components of the brain. Before I start detailing these components, it is actually important to raise the second question. Account for the major components of the brain. To set up the answer of this question, we may exploit pages 155, 156, 157. Now, uh, here, to give the answer to this question, you may start talking about what's called Broca's area, Wernicke's area. These two areas are found on this page, while the uh, next two areas are found on the next page, page 157. Now, how to start the answer of this question? In the beginning, we need to know and define Broca's area. Broca's area is the interior speech cortex, more usually as Broca's area. Found, uh, uh, founded by a French surgeon called Powell Broca. This surgeon reported in the 1980s that damage to this specific part, I'm quoting actually from the book, damage to this specific part of the brain was related to extreme difficulty in producing spoken language. Which means here what? Which means, first, Broca's area is found on the right, which resembles the right hemisphere of the brain. This is one. And it is, as quoted here on the page, the interior speech cortex. It is responsible for what? It's responsible for speech production. Speech production. It was noted that damage to the corresponding area on the right hemisphere had no such effect. This finding was first used to argue that language ability must be located in the left hemisphere and since then has been treated as an indication that the Broca's area is crucially involved in the generation of a spoken language. To put it differently, and to cut long story into short, Broca's area, which is given in the figure as number one, this is one thing. Number two, it is the interior speech cortex. Number three, damage to this, this specific uh, part of the brain results in what? In a difficulty in speech production. In speech production. Now, the second part, uh, part of the answer uh, the second part of the question's answer, it's about Wernicke's area. As you can see, it is given number two in the figure I refer to. This is what the posterior speech cortex of Wernicke's area. Karl Wernicke was a German doctor who in the 1970s reported damage to this part of the brain was found among patients who had speech comprehension difficulties now is this area responsible for now the generation of speech the answer is negative no Verica's area or the damage in this area results in what in speech comprehension not in speech production this finding confirmed the left hemisphere location of the language ability and led to the view that Wernicke's area is part of the brain crucially involved in what? In the understanding of speech. In the understanding of speech. Now again, to rephrase what I have already stated, Wernicke's area, it's the posterior cortex, speech cortex, founded by a German doctor whose name is Karl Wernicke, in, uh, nine, in the 80s, in the 80s, in the, in the 80s 70s, uh, uh, damage to this brain, to this area, of the, this part of the brain results in what? In the production, or sorry, in the comprehension 
difficulty. In comprehension, difficulty. Page 157 displays the last and next two parts of the brain. I mean the components, the, two, the last two components of the brain, number three and number four. So the title here of this section or this subsection is the motor cortex and the acuate fasciculus. Now, motor cortex is given number three in the figure. It is an area that generally controls movement of the muscles, movement of the hands, movement of the feet, movement of the arms. Now, the motor cortex, which is given number three in the figure, as I said, is close to Broca's area, which is a part of the motor cortex that controls the articulatory muscles of what? Of the face, the jaw, the tongue, and the larynx. Now, I may suggest this thing. Uh, <clears throat> maybe we have a patient, and that patient has no damage at all in both hemispheres. I mean, there is no trouble with the Broca's as well as with the Wernicke's area. At the same time, the same person is unable to produce the language. It means that this person has the ability to comprehend and produce, uh, ha have the intention to produce language, generate language, but of course is unable to produce the language because the same person is unable to control the muscles that uh, are responsible for the movement of the parts of the body referred to in a couple of minutes. Now, evidence that this area is involved in the physical articulation of speech comes from work reported in the 1950s by two neurosurgeons, Penfield and Roberts, in the 1959. Uh, what we also need to end the question that I raised earlier about accounting for the major components, it is number four in the figure again with the accolade fasciculus. Now this is given number four. It is close to where? Close now to Wernicke's area. Now the part shown as number four in figure 12.1 is a bundle of what? of nerve fibers and these are called what acute fasciculus if you ask what is meant by acute fasciculus you may uh, define it in the way given in the book page 157 and you can take advantage of the definition given in the glossary at the end of the book which is a bundle of nerve fibers for further uh, details and further explanations, I would recommend you go to uh, a dictionary by David Crystal, uh, a dictionary of linguistics and phonetics by David Crystal. By David Crystal, you may have further details about what is meant by the accolade fasciculus. Again, <coughs> I'm sorry, this was also one of Wernicke's discoveries and is now known to form a what? Crucial connection between Wernicke's and Broca's area. Now, to sum up what is meant by the acute fasciculus, number one, we need to remember it's given number four in the figure. Number two, it's close to Wernicke's area and it is one of his discoveries. Number three, it is responsible for connecting or for the connection between the Wernicke's and Broca's area. Any damage to this part of the brain, there will be, of course, no speech generation as well, and neither will be any ability to, to speech production. So that patient people, if it happens uh, 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 to get a damage in this area, in the component number four, that person will not be able to comprehend as well as not being able to produce the language. Now, the second, uh, this is, of course, the 
end of the second question that I raised. So again, I would like to uh, put it in a different way, account for the major components of the brain. You explore Broca's area, Wernicke's area, motor cortex, and the accurate fasciculus. You give a definition of each of the four, as well as the function for these. Uh, the localization view. Maybe you are asked one time, one day, what is meant by localization view. Now, I would actually uh, uh, pay your attention to the highlighted areas under the subsection of localization view. These uh, uh, paragraphs are highlighted in uh, yellow. So, uh, to sum up, uh, the process or the localization view suggests that the brain activity involved in number one, we hear a word, we understand the word, then we say the very word. Would follow what? A definite pattern. So the word first is here and comprehended by what? By Wernicke's area, because as you remember, Wernicke is Wernicke's area is responsible for speech for speech comprehension. So again, the word is here and comprehended by what by the Wernicke's area. This signal is then transferred to where via the accurate fasciculus, yani by component number four to Broca's area. Why? Because there is the, the place. The way of the preparations are made to generate a spoken version of a word. A signal is then sent to part of the motor cortex to physically articulate the word. Uh, this is actually the uh, the last point that I want you to uh, get or be aware of about the two questions that I raised. First, it is about the definition of the neurolinguistics, and then we need to uh, pass it through the language areas of the brain. The brain is consisted of two hemispheres, the right and the left hemisphere, and these hemispheres are connected by what is called the corpus callosum. Um, on page 156, there is a figure which explains uh, displays the four components. And this raises another question, which is uh, the second one, the accounting for the major components of the brain. So Broca's area, Wernicke's area, motor cortex, and the arcuate fasciculus. And in the end, uh, the uh, class, uh, the lecture actually ends with what is meant by the localization view, is that we first hear the word, then we understand it, and these are uh, the responsibility um, is articulated by Wernicke's area, then transferred to Broca's area, which is responsible for the where to be generated or produced. Thank you very much.